I just spent a month with the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. It wasn't sent to me and I bought it with my own money and today I'm gonna share my experience with you. Now, there are a lot of things that I liked about this device in terms of hardware and I appreciate the fact that Samsung continues to build out their ecosystem by streamlining the interaction between multiple devices. If you have a Samsung tablet or a phone, you could do things like use your Tab S7 Plus as a secondary wireless display. You can easily share files with Quick Share. You can copy on one device and paste on another, and there are a lot of other very useful functions. At the same time, there are some opportunities for improvement with the Galaxy Book Pro 360. So let's talk about the good and the bad and see if this is a device that you may wanna pick up. First, I wanna quickly show you what you're getting. I have the 13 inch model here, and there's also a larger 15 inch version. You get the device itself, a 65 watt super fast charging adapter, a six foot USB-C to USB-C charging cable, and an S Pen, which is great, and I'll get to later on. Now, starting off with the form factor, this is an ultra thin two in one. So the display rotates 360 degrees, allowing you to use it as a laptop or a tablet. We're getting a full aluminum chassis and a beautiful AMOLED display. As far as the size itself, we're looking at less than a half an inch thick or 11.5 millimeters. 2.37 pounds, which is a little bit over one kilogram. So this is an incredibly light and portable device. I really like the matte finish on the exterior and the interior, but it's quite susceptible to picking up fingerprints, which are noticeable with this color. On the left side, we have a status indicator light and two USB-C ports, with the one on the right being a Thunderbolt 4 port. On the other side, we have a USB-C port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a micro SD card slot, which can be used as a way of increasing the internal internal storage. Of course, it won't be as fast as the built-in SSD, but you can pick up a one terabyte micro SD card for around 200 bucks, which I think is a great value. In terms of build quality, the Book Pro 360 is really nice, considering that it's an ultra light device. There is some flex to the keyboard plate, which I'll get to in a later section, but the hinges on the back are solid and smooth when you're switching between laptop and tablet mode, and at the same time, they allow for one-handed opening. As far as color, I chose Mystic Navy because it matches my Tab S7 and Tab S7 Plus. And the Book Pro 360 is also offered in Mystic Bronze. Now, as far as modes, you can use it in laptop mode, tablet mode, and viewing mode if you're watching content and you wanna bring the action closer to you. Now, moving on to evaluating the display, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. We're getting a beautiful 13-inch AMOLED display, which has really nice and vibrant colors, 0.2 millisecond response time for gaming, and a million to one HDR contrast ratio. The image quality on it is very good, and you can switch color profiles from the default Samsung AMOLED profile to Adobe RGB, sRGB, or DCI-P3, depending on what you plan on doing. Now I used it for general office work to play some games, watch content, and then for photo and video editing, and it performed very well. It's also a full touchscreen, so whether you're in laptop or desktop mode, you can use your finger, or the included S Pen to navigate and make selections. This is actually really useful because I constantly switch between using my phone, a dedicated tablet, which I normally use with a keyboard case, and then finally a laptop. And a lot of times when I'm using a laptop, I find myself instinctively reaching for the display instead of the touchpad. Now I knew ahead of time that I would use the touchscreen with the S Pen in tablet mode, and I'll, I'll get to the S Pen in just a minute, but I love the fact that I can scroll and tap items on the display itself in addition to the touchpad. It's a feature that I didn't think of as a benefit ahead of time, but in real life, it's been quite useful. Now auto rotate is enabled by default, so as you switch to tablet mode and then move from landscape to portrait mode, the display automatically reorients itself. Now let's get to what I didn't like, and it comes down to resolution. We're looking at full HD, so 1920 by 1080, and right off the bat, it didn't seem like there was enough room to work with. And then I was messing around with some display settings and I saw that the default scale option was set to 125%. I immediately changed it to 100% and that made things a lot better. Now as a quick comparison, the Tab S7 Plus has a 12.4 inch display, it has a resolution of 2800 by 1752. And then something like the MacBook Air with a 13 inch display has a resolution of 2560 by 1600. And one other thing that I wanna mention about the display is brightness. We're getting 370 nits, which worked quite well when you're inside or 
even in moderately bright conditions. Outside it was fine if I was in the shade or on overcast days, but in bright sunlight, I would want something a little brighter. Now moving on to input devices, let's start with the keyboard. As far as the size of the board and the backlit keys themselves, it's a thumbs up for me. I have the 13 inch version here, so there's no number pad on the right, and the touchpad is centered on the board, which again, I like. When it comes to typing, these were pretty good, but not as good as my Dell XPS or either of my MacBooks. They felt a little soft. I wish there was a little bit more tactile feedback. And here's a quick sound test. Now looking at the layout, we're getting an inverted T for the arrow keys, a row of function keys at the top, we have shortcut keys for Samsung settings, display brightness, dual display functionality. We can enable or disable the touchpad, we can control volume, keyboard brightness, and you can also quickly change performance modes. This is actually a really good thing because the fan on this laptop is definitely noticeable. If you're doing photo or video editing, you'll hear it. And of course it's a double-edged sword because if you force it to be off, then you're throttling back performance. There are four options from no fan, silent, optimized and high performance. So let me know in the comments if you want me to do a couple of detailed tests. Now, one thing that I wish Samsung had added is multimedia controls. And that way I could play, pause or skip when I'm watching content or listening to music. Moving on to the touchpad, it's also pretty good. It's plenty big and I found it to be responsive and accurate, but I don't like the diving board design where you can't click on the top portion of the touchpad. Now let's talk about the S Pen. And if you've watched any of my Samsung tablet reviews, you know that I'm a big fan of this stylus. Like first of all, the actual user experience is great. The tip of the S Pen has a little bit of a gift to it, so it feels like you're actually writing on paper rather than tapping on a hard surface. Next, it's what really amps up this two-in-one device because I could do things like take notes or sketch out storyboards or shot ideas without having to grab a tablet. Now, of course, if you like to draw, that's also an option for you. And as soon as you flip the keyboard around and you go into tablet mode, then the keyboard and the touchpad are disabled. If you've gotten value from this video so far, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. I still see that over 90% of you are new viewers, so hit that subscribe button. As far as biometric authentication, the Book Pro 360 has a fingerprint sensor on the top right of the keyboard. So after a quick one-time setup, you can use it to log in instead of having to type your password. So far, it's worked great for me. It's been really fast, and I haven't had any issues with it not recognizing my fingerprint. And moving on to camera, we're getting a not so great 720p camera, which of course will work for video calls, but it's definitely not great. And here's a quick sample of the camera and microphone. Here's a sample of what the webcam on the Book Pro 360 looks like. This will also give you an idea of what the microphone sounds like. I'm sitting in the exact same spot where I was filming the video with my lights on. So this will give you an idea of what the room looks like and hopefully this gives you an idea of what you should expect. Now the speakers sound like typical laptop speakers, so it really comes down to your expectations. I wish that they were a little fuller and maybe a little bit louder, but to be honest, I rarely use the speakers on my laptops because I'm usually wearing Bluetooth headphones. I'm working on a few other videos with this laptop, so make sure you check them out if you're interested in finding out how these speakers compare to others. As far as performance, we're looking at a 2.8 gigahertz i7, which is plenty for everything this laptop is intended Intended to do. Now, this isn't positioned as a pro device, but I was still able to do photo and video editing as long as I didn't go crazy with the footage type and visual effects. I'll also quickly give you Geekbench scores in case that's something that you're interested in. For single core performance, I got 1238, and for multi core performance, I got 5127. This is also an Evo certified device, so we're getting the 11th gen processor, integrated Intel Iris Xe graphics, improved battery life, and powerful connectivity options. If you're planning on using this for schoolwork, for office work, to view content, work with web based applications, and even photo and some video editing, this two-in-one will work great for you. And as a bonus, you do get to use the S Pen with desktop applications like Lightroom and Photoshop. Speaking of apps, let's talk about the operating system and the included apps. The Book Pro 360 ships with Windows 10 Home Edition, so if you're coming from another Windows laptop, this will be a super smooth transition for you. Now, as far as apps, Samsung does include several of their own apps with the install, some of which I'll use and then some of which I'll probably uninstall. Now coming from the Tab S7 and S7 Plus, 
I really like Samsung Notes. I think it's a very complete note-taking app, and I like that I can use it with the S Pen on this device and then sync it with my other Samsung devices. I'll probably end up doing a dedicated video for these apps, but some other notable ones See what I did there? Anyway, some other cool apps are Samsung Studio Plus, which is a video editor, and then Samsung Voice Note, which looks to be a Windows version of Samsung Voice Recorder. Like with virtually every Windows machine that I've ever had, there's definitely some bloatware included, but that's nothing that a few minutes of purging can't take care of. Now looking at battery life, the Book Pro 360 has a 63 watt hour battery, and Samsung reports 20 hours of battery life on a single charge. That of course depends on what apps you're using, how resource intensive they are, and the display brightness. So don't expect this type of performance for anything other than maybe web browsing. Now before I get to the configuration and pricing options, I wanna go back to the ecosystem because I think it's so important. One of the things that I love about my Apple products is just how well they work together. So as I move from my iPhone to an iPad, to a MacBook, a Mac, or even the Apple Watch, the devices communicate with each other really well, and that creates an excellent user experience. This multi-device use case is clearly a focus for Samsung, and they're well positioned in that space because they make laptops, tablets, phones, and smartwatches. New features like QuickShare, which essentially replicates Apple's AirDrop for wireless photo and file sharing, as well as cross-device copy and paste are extremely useful. What we're seeing here is the development of a more complete ecosystem, rather than relying on the functionality that's available on a single app or that requires additional apps to be installed on every device. Now looking at the configuration and pricing options, the 13-inch Book Pro 360 starts at $1199, with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage. For an extra 200 bucks, you get bumped up to 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of internal storage. Now those are the only two options, so you can't upgrade the internal storage or the RAM independently of each other. And the maximum internal storage for this size is 512 gigs. If you get the larger 15 inch model, then eight gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of internal storage will cost you 1299. And moving up to 16 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of internal storage is $14.99. Personally, I think this approach is a little bit limiting. I wish you could upgrade independently and that there was more internal storage available on all models. And I do wanna remind you that you can effectively add some internal storage using the micro SD card slot. Remember that I have links in the description to all the products that I talked about. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe and then watch one of these videos. You know what I always say? Buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.